Hello, my name is John Baser, and welcome to the show John's World. This show is a UFO convention, which is being held at the in Santa Clara, and there'll be various guests on here. People have been abducted by UFOs, people have written books and movies, and right now I'm talking to Phyllis Golly from Fate Magazine. She's going to talk about some of the issues that have been in the magazine previously about UFOs and other events. Could you tell me about the magazine? Yes, uh, Fate Magazine has been around since 1948, and it started with Kenneth Arnold's sighting of uh, UFOs, flying saucers, and that's where the actual uh, the term came from. And uh, there's a cover of our uh, very first issue down there. He saw these uh, craft, and it, it spawned the whole movement of UFOs, and that's that's how UFOs kind of got their name, the flying saucers, was with his sighting. The magazine's been around for 58 years, and predominantly it, it deals with stories about UFOs. Every September we do a special specifically about UFOs. Flying saucers, people's personal experiences, dealing with uh, aircraft and uh, abductions and all different different experiences specific to UFOs. Yeah, there's a book over here that says UFO policies at the White House. What's that one about? We also uh, we also publish uh, some UFO books at our sister publishing company. This was written by Larry Bryant, and he was a real whistleblower, uh, worked with uh, Freedom of Information. And Jimmy Carter uh, promised to disclose what he knew about UFOs when he got elected. But, of course, the powers that be wouldn't allow that to happen. So this is his letters to Jimmy Carter and the responses. So it's really fascinating. Hey, what other books do you have published? This is something about Mars, or well, we also have the Coronado UFO incident. This is about mass abductions that happened on Coronado Island here in California. So it was of, of great interest to a lot of people because four people actually got abducted at the same time at a at a conference. <clears throat> And yeah, another one that says 35 minutes to Mars. Yes, this was written by uh, Rosemary Decker, and uh, she talks about all the tales of possibility of life on Mars and how we really could get there in just 35 minutes. And she has some tremendous information, and this predated when we fought before they found the water on Mars. So there, there is a chance for life on Mars that there was there at one time. Also, uh, have you experienced a, seen a UFO or experienced an alien encounter? I had uh, have seen uh, UFO, I've seen spacecraft when I was a very small child, about six years old. My mother and I were coming home from, from our small town in North Dakota. This was like many, many years ago before satellites and we stopped the car and uh, there was a light hovering uh, on the horizon moving across the sky and, and mom says, well, there's a UFO. I said, okay, no big <laughs> deal. We, do, we saw things like that all the time on the farm. Okay. Also, thank you. And this has been very interesting. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mel Van Dusen. I'm helping out John at the uh, UFO convention here in San Jose. And with me is Robert Farrell, and he's written a book called Alien Log. What prompted you to write this book, Mr. Farrell? Well, um, I've been to a number of UFO conferences like this one, uh, listened to a number of great speakers, give out a lot of interesting information. And, and generally the audience were people who were already believers. And uh, it occurred to me that really a book should be written aimed at the general populace who maybe don't have a particular interest in UFOs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I decided to write this book in, in a fictional format for that purpose. Generally, what is the book about? I can hold it. Okay. Uh, it's obviously about aliens being alien log, mm -hmm. but the uh, information that I, I give out through the dialogue occurs in a story that revolves around an alien device that was found at a uh, crash in Kingman, Arizona, UFO crash in 1953. And during the recovery of the craft, the captain who's overseeing the recovery finds this artifact, which he believes is either the alien uh, uh, log of the ship or perhaps a communicating device. But it turns out it's a log of the ship, which is why the title of the book is Alien Log. And uh, so the captain, who now we jump ahead to present time, is a, a retired general dying of cancer. He's been following the UFO scene all of his life, and he becomes alarmed now because he's reading about people being abducted. And under hypnosis, the abductees report that the aliens are about to make their presence known. Well, these people were gray-haired because they were told it's going to be in their lifetime, and they're gray-haired, so the, the uh, general is alarmed. Mm -hmm. 
So he takes the device and gives it to the President of the United States and explains his concern. The President commissions a colonel to put together a team of scientists to try and get the device activated and translated in order to find out what the aliens are up to and head them off at the pass. Mm -hmm. And so it's through the dialogue of these characters, uh, and there's not very many, there's only three main characters. There's the colonel, and then the main character is actually a young linguist. She's only 27 years old, but she has a world-renowned reputation for her ability to translate anything that's written. For her, it's intuitive. She doesn't know how she does it herself. Mm -hmm. But she's paired in the secret underground base with a young astrophysicist who has a passion for UFOs. Mm -hmm. And he's part of the team in order to do a technical interpretation of what she might translate. So it's through the dialogue of these three characters that the reader learns a lot about various aspects of UFOlogy. Mm -hmm. uh, how crop circles relate to um, maybe the aliens communicating with us. How, what the Sumerians knew 6,000 years ago and how did they possibly know the things that they knew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what their beliefs were how UFOs actually work, how they can make 100G accelerations and right angle turns without killing the occupants. That's all explained through the dialogue of the characters. Wonderful. Well, it seems like an interesting book. Are there people here at the convention who have had contact with aliens? Uh, oh yes, I'm sure there's quite a few. Yeah, uh, I think I see one over there. Maybe we can uh, talk with her a bit later. Yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Farrell. Thank you very much, Mr. Farrell. Uh, You're welcome. Hi, I've just come across this wonderful lady, Cynthia Crawford, who's made these sculptural pieces here, and they certainly are interesting. Um, Cynthia, could you tell us how you first started making these things? Uh, yes, I've been an experiencer. I've experienced aliens since I was a child, and I continue to experience them today, even. Could you tell us about your very first experience with, what would you call these things, aliens? Uh, I call my galactic family because I've gotten to know them quite well. They come to me frequently, but you, people call them aliens or ETs. Mm -hmm. What was your first experience with them? Uh, I was a child when I first started experiencing them. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I had fear at the very beginning until I uh, went to a psychologist and gave up my fear and began um, talking with the beings mm -hmm. to find out why I was experiencing them. How do the psychologists react to this? Well, she is trained exclusively to work with uh, other experiencers who've had contact with aliens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, could you tell us a bit, well, tell us about this first experience. That sounds interesting. Well, the first experience, actually, I was a child. Yes. And um, I was terrified because I've had two different types of experiences as a child. Um, I found out uh, years ago that um, I was a hybrid in experiment of the government. You were an experiment of the government? Yes, I was. Uh, have al two types of alien DNA in me and... Um, you are part alien? That's what I've been told. Okay, go ahead. Uh, anyway, um, I've had encounters with um, uh, good aliens, uh, mostly. I've had some bad encounters, but the majority are good encounters, and the good ones have asked me to sculpture them so that when they come to this planet to help us, that we will no longer be afraid of them. And they're very good, very benevolent beings. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about some of these beings? Oh, okay. Uh, I have, this is the uh, called the forest being, and this particular one here uh, actually can camouflage. Some people call it shape-shifting, mm -hmm. so that it will look like the forest and you won't be able to see them. They are protectors of uh, our, our forest and um, all that grows on this planet. Uh, I've also had an encounter with the other being in front, Hui, who is a little three-foot tall being, this one. How did you know his name was Hui? Well, I gave him that name because he talks uh, by making who sounds. And how old were you when you met him? Uh, I met him a year ago. Okay. And I met him in uh, my backyard. Uh, I live against the Superstition Mountains in uh, Arizona. Uh -huh. And how did you get up and go in the backyard and find this creature? I was doing a meditation one night and uh, I've had a lot of encounters and suddenly I was I found myself outside but I was amongst several. Oh dear. 
What was your reaction to that? It was wonderful. Really? They're very loving. Very Why wonderful. is it that I don't see these things? I mean, you know, I'm fairly open and, you know, they don't come to me. How is that? Well, I would say that... Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say that um, a lot of us have been selected to help people spiritually evolve in the coming time. I've been overlooked once more. No, right. no, no, not at all. Go ahead. Uh, but anyway, to help, they've helped, we're here to help you spiritually evolve into the new world that will be happening after uh, 12, 2012. 